Hello. The podcast you're listening to is a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. I'm Kyle, and I'm the host of Creative Block. It's a podcast where I talk with artists and creative entrepreneurs. So if you're curious to understand the minds of theater producers, local actors, podcasters, or even a guy who created a company making houses out of old shipping containers, then you should come and subscribe to Creative Block, a podcast that comes out twice a month. That's not a threat. It's just a promise. Available anywhere you download podcasts. Tell me your dreams over bacon and eggs. We'll share a laugh and a story and even a wish. On the breakfast dish. Bop. Season three, I don't know what. I don't know either. Here we go. Good Good morning. (laughs) I was trying to do it at the same time as you. I appreciate that. Yeah, we're a little off sync. It's fine. We've taken a hiatus and we're back in season three of The Breakfast Dish. The mother and son podcast that I, Karen Johnson Diamond, host with my son, Griffin Cork. Hi there. Your pass actually says Karen Johnson Diamond, a.k.a. Cork. That's because we are recording live at the Calgary International Film Festival, and my proof of vaccination is under my legal name, which is, as your mother, Karen Cork. But no one knows me as that, unless I want to use the credit card, says your dad. (laughs) Very interesting. Yes, if you missed that, we are recording right now in the SIF podcast booth, the official SIF studio. Uh, This will be the best sounding episode we've ever done because we have an outside producer and it's not just Griffin yelling at his mother to turn down the sensitivity of her Yeti microphone. We have Kyle Marshall on the sidelines from Media Lab YYC, from all of your favorite podcasts. I have to imagine if you're listening to ours, The Creative Block, uh, Kyle and Dave versus The Machine. uh, Putting it together. Putting it together. There's There's one more I'm missing. Right, somebody did, Jen and Kyle. Uh, so, you know, we're starting season three off with a bang, uh, but do not expect it to uh, stay this good for this long. This is our first time recording in person. Like, we can see our guests from the shoulders down. It's incredible. <laughs> you sound like a serial killer. You're right. We can see our guests. There's no box around our guests. And strong biceps. <laughs> Talk about... What we do. Oh, I don't know how to talk about what we do anymore. Okay. We started this podcast during the stay away from each other times in order to highlight and amplify any arts that were happening online or socially distanted or in the back of a loading dock. I did see it play in the back of a loading dock from my car once. It was awesome. Anyway, that (laughs) kind of stuff. uh, We started that a year and a half ago. And now the world is uh, sort of opening up. So we're it's opening enough, uh, opening up enough for us to be in person yes. recording a podcast at yes. the very least. Art, you can sort of see art in person now. And I did. I saw a play last night. It was weird and wonderful. Uh, so this season three of The Breakfast Dish is the season where we've decided we're going to talk to anybody we want just because we like them. Right. It's it's less so about whether or not you have an event coming up to promote. It's basically just we're interested in you and what you like to do and appreciate your candor and, and character and the cut of your jib. This has never been about the art anyway. We always go, what are you doing? <laughs> it's all about the money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, usually we ask them, what are you doing? Tell us your thing. And then we get into conversations like breakfast cereal or something like that. I see. And yes, while that is our mandate going forward, uh, we are about to talk to two artists. However, go back to the introduction. Emily Renner Wallace is the director of God Lady here at the Calgary International Film Festival. Emily, welcome. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Matt McKinney is the writer, director, producer, em- editor. Am I missing anything else? Of going to the chapel, also screening at the Calgary International Film Festival. Matt, hello. Greetings. Do, do you have another position I missed? Um, it's one of those like, oh, something needs to get done and I don't have money. Yeah, I, I better do that <laughs> I'll thing. do that. But 100%. I also, I pushed a lot to my brother, so he, he covered a lot. <laughs> you know, because I don't have to pay him as much because he's family. I want that on the credits of every movie now. Something has to be done and I don't have money for it, colon, and then the name of somebody. <laughs> That's right. My brother. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of brothers, I noticed this is not even really off topic. It's not. Who are you convincing? I'm just talking about films for a second. Okay. Uh, Griffin hired me to do craft services on his Abracadabra season two that was filming this summer. Never done craft services before. So loved it. As Matt said, she's family, so I didn't have to pay her as much. (laughs) 
<laughs> I had my mom do my craft services. That's what I was going to say. Your well, mom and dad. Uh, my mom and dad did craft services. We had some great chili. It worked out. Yeah. Yeah. We also we also stole a lot of things from our dad and your husband. So yeah, like he, tents and, and coolers and whatnot. He didn't so. notice a thing. Yeah, great. He Sorry, people were just Emily, dying. who did uh, craft services on God Lady? I looked at the credits and didn't see one. There was a catering company though. There was a catering company. That All we came care in about and... is it wasn't your mom. <laughs> no, no. My my parents uh my parents don't live here, so they were they were in Vancouver. But uh yeah, no, I the food was good. I remember eating, so okay. that's good. good. We definitely <laughs> provided it. It was available. That's right. How professional. <laughs> Nobody was starving. Yeah. We're not here to expose this. It's not an expose. Don't worry. <laughs> well, that's, it's, you know, breakfast dish. I thought we should just talk about, you know, the food that was on the set. I just had fruit gushers. <laughs> uh, Tim Horton's coffee was nice. on the set. Yeah, 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 shout out to Tim Horton's. I don't but know. But seriously, fruit gushers. Could there be you, anything you've been more on a popular? Real fruit gushers kick recently. No, no, because. You didn't even let me have fruit gushers as a kid. We've talked about this. It's true. You're right. That was a nice little golden thing that I could go to all my friends in elementary school and be like, I'll trade you anything for those little, little juice globes. Same. I, uh, I wasn't allowed Gushers and I also wasn't allowed Alpha Gettys and they were my favorite. Oh. But my friend two doors down, her mom always had Alpha Gettys, So it's always going there for lunch being like, hook me up. <laughs> so as an Alpha adult, Gettys. you get them whenever you can. Like, do you go to the store and buy them because you Hard don't have no. to ask anyone? Hard no. Really? No. No, I'm celiac now, so I can't oh. eat. Yeah, oh. wah, 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 boring. <laughs> Gluten free Alpha Gettys. There you go. Somebody make it up. Oh, yeah. This is my least favorite question, but however, it is good to get the information out. Uh, Matt, why don't you give us a synopsis of going to the chapel? Karen and I have both watched both your films, and we're going to get into it, but just for our listeners, hit us with it. Yeah, so going to the chapel is about a polyamorous thruple that moves to a small town and becomes haunted by a priest. So very cool. And Emily, give us a synopsis for God Lady. Uh, so God Lady is the story of a door-to-door evangelist who um, drives up to the wrong house full of uh, creepy women. <laughs> yeah. <And laughs> while getting into all of our family, I will have to say that I need to find out where you got that Jesus bobblehead because Kimmy would love that. My sister collects all forms of Jesus toilet paper covers, Jesus buttons, Jesus glowing velvet paintings. So we need the Jesus bobblehead. Does she have a Jesus glowing velvet painting? She did at one point. I think it's gone now. How do you do that? But she also had a Jesus head nightlight on the back of her toilet. It was awesome. (laughs) Haven't you been to the Blackfoot truck stop? Have I never taken you there? I guess. No, I'm just... There's like velvet painting that's light up and Jesus is like pointing your truck this way. You never been there? I guess I I didn't notice the Jesus part of the block. We have to move on. Okay. The Jesus, it's a a dancing Jesus that I got off of Amazon and used without permission. Oh, you didn't clear that with with Gigi? No, no. No, uh, he was unavailable. Yeah, he's dead now. Yeah, he's he's dead now. Isn't it public domain then? (laughs) It's been around for a while. Uh, something I wanted to bring up uh, in God Lady, the who think I might also have been the screenwriter, but the the woman who played the mother, Sally Bishop, a uh, very famous stunt performer, also just uh, at least on the date of recording last night took home an Ampia Rosie Award for best stunt performance. Yeah, she's a well known stunt woman in town, and she also produced and wrote it and starred in it, but uh, didn't want to do any stunts because she was trying to work on her. Um, she's trying to work on her acting skills to be a better stunt performer. Sure. So uh, she wrote this as an opportunity for her to do that. Right, right. That's, that's all my question is because there's a, there's a good amount of fights in it if she had a hand in that, but you brought on someone else. Correct. Yeah. Our stunt coordinator was um, Adrian Young. You guys filmed over at John Scott Ranch. We did. How was that? A lot of fun. It was incredible. And John was super generous. And it was, am I allowed to swear? Yes, 100%. It was cold as fuck. Oh, yeah. It looked like I it. echo that sentiment when I was filming. I don't know if we filmed around the same time, but yeah, we were... You look, it looked like you filmed close to around the same time. Yeah, both winter movies, but man, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, it was the, it was the first storm of the year on like the October 2nd, and the day before it was beautiful, and then it was minus 25 with a wind chill uh, on our first day of shooting, and then the next day it was back to being normal again. So Ooh. that was tough continuity-wise. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially for Don, because Don didn't have a... Oh, wait, no. The daughters were just in, like, nightgowns yeah. and socks. Bloomers yeah. or something. Oh, my like, God. Like, yeah, they were... Uh, well, they're stunt ladies, so they're super tough. Right. And that was really kind of them. But, uh, yeah, we gave them long johns to at least wear under all of their weird dresses. That's how you could tell I'm not in stunts. They look cold. <laughs> it's so hard. Look cold. <laughs> and it was so windy. Like, we worked there this summer, and it was so... There's no break from the wind. 
even when you're actually inside the big house. Yeah, it's not real. It's real cold in there. Yeah. How do you do anything? Like your hands are like frozen and you're like, I can't, I can't act. I'm a hand actor. Totally. Like, I'm like, this is, it's done. Yeah. yeah. They're, doing, they're doing fights and punches yeah. in the snow. I'm just going, ooh, oh, your face. <laughs> I'm trying to say my lines when my lips are frozen. Nice. Rah, 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 rah. Yeah. That, that literally, that literally happened. Yeah. We were, we were sh- shooting that kind of long opening bit, but between the two of them talking and their faces started freezing and they just couldn't enunciate the words anymore. And it was just like, Hey, bail out. Let's go inside where there's less wind at least. And, uh, so I don't know if you noticed or not, but there's some continuity between her hair being like, bah! in on one side and then the other, it's like, mm-hmm, and perfectly in place. Didn't notice. I also didn't notice. Didn't notice. And that's a, that's a, continuity is a sticky thing for me in film. So I, I was really smart. I stayed inside the whole time and just filmed out through a window. Yeah. So I had my actors outside and I was like, guys, what's your problem? It's fine. So I was, I was the mean, the mean director. What location was yours? Like, where were you? Uh, we were at a farm, um, uh, Jordan Wieben, who did some art for us. Uh, his parents had a farm that they were selling. So they had this old uh, house, like sort of 50s, 60s house that was built and they weren't using much. So, uh, yeah, we went out there. It's sort of near Olds, but just driving the highways. Like we had a tech person end up in the ditch twice uh, on the way back as we had a crazy snowstorm. The, wait, the same tech person? Yeah, the same guy. Oh, man. <laughs> Except in the ditch twice. Oh, no. Yeah, it was pretty funny. But he got out. No, he's still there today. <laughs> anyway, know, if anyone sees, please call the breakfast dish at... There's a documentary at the SIF Festival about the tech guys stuck <laughs> in the It's an on-the-phone documentary. It's really sad to watch. Uh, the... Speaking of mean director, you did a 16 minute short film as one take. I would, can I just say I noticed that? And <laughs> Griffin's way more of a film person. I'm a theater person. I, say I noticed that. I, I just want, I was so proud of myself. I was watching this going, he hasn't, there's no, there's been no cuts. Everything follows. <gasps> he, look, he's going down the stairs and we're still just over Michaela's shoulder. I was so impressed with myself. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if this was intentional. I bet it was, is that there's points where, um, the camera comes to stillness where in some like in some films, that's where you could like sneak in a cut. Although there was little things like the door had just shut. So the thing on the wall was shaking or you could kind of see a window. You could see a leaf moving. So there was little things even in the still frame that you'd be like, no, it's still going. That's crazy. Was that intentional or did that just happen? Well, the the intention was just to do it as one cut and not have any uh, cuts in there. Um, there was one that we tried to do across a box. Um, just to like, cause I was like, okay, I should build in a cut somewhere. We went for it and it didn't look very good at all. And so I had to like in post, just zoom into the box so that we, it doesn't look as crappy as it did <laughs> to like cover the fact that we tried to do it. So yeah, there's zero cuts, but I think those things really save it in those more still moments. You're right. Sure. Of just little things moving in the frame. Otherwise, yeah, you sort of suspect, oh, they must be cutting if, if something's static. Which which is too bad. Like, it's too bad that the knee jerk of like, no way they did this. And then it's, it's like, it's just because it's an impressive feat. There's there's the big hubbub of the true detective scene that's, that's whatever, six minutes and four seconds. And you had a 50-minute short film. And obviously they had whatever, guns and trucks and whatnot. But it's it's not easy to do. You guys must have rehearsed. Yeah, we did two days of rehearsal. Um, but then on the day in the space, everything changes and... I'm glad we did the rehearsal, but yeah, we only got in six takes and it was so cold and losing the daylight. We started to get so much reflections in the window that we couldn't film through that way. So, cause it would just see the camera as we go by. So that, that was a bit of a nightmare, but we got one that worked totally enough. The only time <laughs> I've ever noticed a one take thing is that uh, college or university that did the I got a feeling that tonight's going to be a good night video. I think, yeah, I think well, I, there's a few like police forces that did that as well. There's a few of them. Yeah, okay. You can cut in, like what you just said in a still, like if something comes to rest, you could cut there without noticing it? I, I would, it would sort of want it to be in movement, like in, um, what is it, 19... 19- 1917. Sorry, I got my war years wrong. Um, <laughs> oh, those war years. <laughs> he does a lot with black. So they'll go into blackness and then it's very easy to cut in the black because oh, the gotcha. audience doesn't notice. And then you come out into a new hallway or something and it's a different... It seems like the camera just kept moving, but they've actually given a break. Okay. Oh, and I have seen that movie. Isn't that... I didn't notice it in that movie, but I noticed it in your movie. Okay. I'm going to, I'm just jumping around randomly now. Do it. Your costumes for God Lady, Emily, were provided by the Costume Collective. That's correct. So that's Ralami and Rebecca. Yes, it is. Uh, when that happens, do you, 
Was there a designer as well that looked at those costumes and went, I want this, this, this? I uh, tried. I couldn't find anybody to do it. Uh, so that was that was me going to the, the costume shop. Awesome. Uh, and hanging out with Ralmi and picking a bunch. Okay, so is it just me or did anyone notice like the perfect cross in the white top of the dress Don was wearing? Like it was is the design of the dress, but I just thought it was brilliant. <laughs> That's great. Say you did it on purpose. Uh there was a couple options for dresses. I did that. I just like went to Nordstrom and bought that Ted Baker dress. Um, yeah, it was expensive. It was probably one of the most expensive things on the on our set that day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, it. I mean, it fit Dawn so perfectly, and with the silly white coat, it just looked. It looked like God Lady. It was. Yeah, it was a smash hit. I couldn't believe how well it worked. Gorgeous. Because you had a, a set just chock a block full of stunt knowledge. There's the moment where the actress gets like. Totally whipped back through the oh, front yeah. door. That was, was so cool. Was that the effects or was that like a bungee thing? That was 100% real. Ooh. Yeah. So we painted out the wires, but 100% she got sucked back high up into some stunt pads. Cool. Wait, wait, wait. I need to talk this out because I don't get this. So she's on the porch <laughs> and she's Everyone got... shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy needs to figure this out. Uh, she's got wires on her and so somebody yanks her back through the door and she doesn't crack her head because she's coming out the door when that happens, right? Mm -hmm. And then she goes up in the space in the house. See, I would have thought that she threw herself out and you reversed the film. No, it's... Uh, so they, they do the cabling so that it's... There's no way that she could, like, hit the top of the door or anything like that. Uh, and how, how they rig it is how to keep her safe from hitting any sides of the door. And she's wearing a harness, and then we cut a hole in her dress, and then they attach the cables to that. And uh, it was a hand pull, so you can do different kinds. Like, you can do, like, a ratchet pull, which is a machine, and that's where you get that kind of... It's it, If we had more money, it would have been a ratchet pull. It's, it was that kind of a move. Um, but this was kind of a hand pull pulley system where two people are pulling on the rope, and she goes... Wait a minute. Was yours also one take? Uh, only once she got in the house. Right, okay, because I remember uh, the pull around to the front and you see the little girl in the back. Yeah, okay, also very cool. Tell me about her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just thought, she, you know, like if you've got, what did I just saw a show last night that was like never work with children or live animals. But that was quite a stunning little performance. Yeah, um, Kira... Pliva, she's the daughter of the woman, the first woman or, that gets tossed out of the house and goes down the stairs. Oh, okay. Uh, that's her daughter. Kiara was really excited to do it because she's, her mom does stunts. She's friends with Adrian Young's kids. She loved the idea of being hung, hanged, <laughs> hanged. Yeah, I don't know. Hanged. Uh, and, and kind of talking around VFX, Matt, in, in yours, I, I think I saw a mixture of, of VFX and practical effects. So like there was the moment where the spo spoilers. Wait, are we spoiling? I don't think totally so. Well, spoiling. No, cause now, are, now hold on. There, are they, are both your films screening tonight? Yeah. Okay. Right. So this is going to come out. And so, so too late. Um, you missed it. <laughs> I'll, I'll be more cryptic about it. There is an, instrument at some point that is kind of floating in the air out the window and then also there is a uh, there's the body that gets dragged that to me looked practical where the floating instrument looked vfx am i right about that correct yeah how is it integrating both vfx and practical effects in a one take shoot yeah the timing was really hard just because the actor had to get um strapped like to get the uh it was like a, a hand pull as well um just with a line from his wrist mm -hmm. but he does this like run towards the window so he has to like get prepped for the for the pull before that and then run to the window smashes into the window falls we sort of hang on uh, michaela cochran inside and then gives him time for or for the stunt uh puller to like link up with him and so that they can get all that prepped before we come outside with the camera so yeah it was definitely sort of getting the timing of that right and there's so many takes because we had the makeup person coming in doing blood too in between that so she's doing the blood he's getting like, oh she was like around the house as michaela came yeah in. so they oh just rush God. in as, as we cut as we move away they're all rushing in doing all the stuff and then we keep moving and we come around and and ideally they're all done but there's multiple takes where the makeup artist is still in the frame or, or they just didn't know that they were still in the frame or so you have to, you're done. You have to reset once, once that kind of happens, yeah, right? Yeah. We just, we just followed it through to the end and that was kind of our philosophy. Like maybe we end up cutting in the end and sure. we just use what we got. But. Or it's another rehearsal. Or it's another, exactly. For sure. Yeah. yeah. But how did, I want to, how did, how did your painting out of the wire go? Cause that was really hard on our end. That was another one I just pushed to my brother and was like, 
please help deal with this. <laughs> Um, a, a good friend of mine, Brendan Rathbone, oh, who I've known for yeah. 12 years, he, he married my best friend. He, uh, he did it. Oh, so Ooh. good. Yeah. It was really <laughs> kind of him. I mean, I introduced him to his wife, so. So he owes you. Yeah. I feel like that's a fair exchange. Uh, sometimes though, I think people are like, I don't, I want to do this so bad. I love painting out wires because I'm so passionate about it and I will learn from it, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I'll call but, this film for a, a lower rate because man, this film rules. Like that's happened for sure. Yeah. I don't know. Like there's, I, 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 I would, I'd do some movies for free. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is now a casting podcast for Karen Johnson Diamond. <laughs> Do you have any more quick rapid fire questions for each of them? Because I'm going to ask some some blanket questions for the two. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, Matt's wearing a mother mother hat. Uh, is that to your favorite <laughs> band? Is this now just a, yeah an yeah. audio description? This is just, <laughs> okay, uh, these are rando questions. You said rapid fire. Do you like that band? Uh, yes, I, I really like Mother Mother. Okay, so does my niece. Okay, good. Um, and you're wearing a shirt that says the Distillers. Are you a distiller? Uh, no, but I do like that band. Oh, it's a band. It is. It's not just a a distillery. Yes, it's true. Okay. Okay, Now ask Kyle something. Okay. Uh, Kyle, uh, in the episode of Putting It Together where you're talking about Every Day a Little Death, Karen is your guest. Karen Unland from That's a Thing was your guest. Um, I haven't finished the episode yet. Do you sing it at the end? Do you ever like sing a song? Although I am working on it, I'm being pushed to do a cabaret performance. (gasps) Wow. wow. Kyle Marshall and a cabaret performance. Griffin Cork, uh, did you know that your grandfather, Gary Cork, was involved in the building of the Eau Claire market? <laughs> no, I didn't really. Engineer investor. Wow. Okay. There you go. So. Way to go, Grandpa Cork. There, there's all my rapid things. Okay, perfect. Would you have one for me? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I see that I'm going to do the same method you did. I see that you're wearing a purple shirt. Is purple your favorite color i almost said band first of all i think it's blue but uh purple i think it's blue too am i okay (laughs) (laughs) it's a a lavender okay but my favorite band when i was a kid was donnie and marie osmond and he's a huge purple fan of purple but so is mayor nancy and i kind of like him too i'm sorry mayor nancy's my favorite band uh all right (laughs) uh i have a question just about um uh, Matt, for you, uh, for your entire film, and Emily, for the section where you decided to do a one take, uh, is there a specific reason in the narrative of like the story or the uh, or the message you're trying to get across, like either in the scene or the film, that made you do one take, or was it just to see if you could do it? Um, for me, my initial concept was actually just that the camera is it, it was going to be a one take, but that the camera was st- static in one spot and it was just rotating the entire time. Because as a, I just really wanted to play with um, what's outside of the frame. Is there's there's tension there in, in what we're not seeing. So as like something leaves the frame, now we don't know where that thing is, and and we're gonna see what happens in the next time we come around to it. But I couldn't find a location that offered all the vantage points that I wanted, sure. and so I had to sort of rejig the script, and and then we ended up using a gimbal, um, and and actually moving around the house as opposed to just being locked down in one spot. Um, but for me, it was more of a, an aesthetic thing for the film. Um, and I just like the idea of a horror film as a challenge, not cutting because it's it's hard to be scary, I think, when you're sure, not totally. cutting because you can build in a lot of just jump things when you're cutting. And it's just more of a challenge to not do that. So it was it was less connected to the narrative itself and more of a, a technical challenge on my end. And I, I will say, I think you did a commendable job on that. Like this, the sound design was just gorgeous. Like the, the little, little, uh, uh, trills of piano you had thrown in. And then there was one that kind of came down and then you heard the, the door knocking and there was like, Ooh, like just that, just that, uh, change in almost, I don't know, pitch or tempo that was kind of scary of like a very beautiful piano trill to like hard knocks. Yeah. We went, I had a great composer, um, uh, which who is my brother's girlfriend's brother. So nice. pulling, in, pulling in, in the family. family links. Um, and he did some great, cause we were really leaning into like the organ, um, like kind of church organ, him kind of vibe. And he did some, some great mixes. So we were, um, had amazing choices from him. So I'm so lucky to have worked with just somebody that can produce and create music for you as you're editing and going is so lovely. And Emily, what about you? Uh, what what about you uh, uh, in that specific scene? Uh, uh, yeah, ma- what made you do it one take? What, was that was that the plan from the beginning? We, we, like when you got into the location, was like, oh, we should just try and do this in one. Was it like a on the day thing or running out of time? Like what what uh, what led you there? Uh, it was when I went to the location. Mm. Uh, I wanted to I wanted to do it that way just because. It was like when I walked around at the location for the first time, and I was kind of planning the shot. I was like, well, we should do this in one. And it is also 
omitting, like you're, you're behind her seeing what she's seeing over her shoulder, and, and then you're not seeing stuff as the camera turns around, and then doors flying open, and the, the technical challenge of, because we had a whole uh, lighting change in the middle of that winter, which took every single human we had on set, you know, hiding, hiding the light in with flags, or um, doing the lighting cues as far as just change, change, changing the lights, or the wire pulls we had on the doors so uh it's fun it's it's so much fun yeah i love it yeah yeah it's it's i guess sort of like theater I don't, i've never well i did theater as a kid but uh i haven't done it as an adult so it, it had that sort of uh um what's the word i'm thinking just of. in the moment because yeah. that's what drew me to it as well having a theater background it's just like i just like things unfolding in this us just going along for the ride right thinking of unfolding things uh <laughs> I, mommy needs to know what a gimbal is uh, just a stabilizer for the camera. So you put the, you attach your camera to this thing that is with um, using motors to stabilize so that it's not shaking as you're walking around. And so it just seems like a very fluid motion uh, as you move around the, the house or your location. Okay, second question. Um, I'm not spoiling anything. The moment that our young lady is revealed, not when she's hanged, but later she's revealed, and her face does this amazing... Is that a, um, something that you do in post or that you did with a filter at that moment? Uh, that was a VFX post Okay, that uh, Brendan Rathbone did for us. Okay. Yeah. Because on Abracadavers, sometimes somebody would have some sort of weird gel or something. The light yeah, would yeah. bounce if off someone, it and it would turn somebody. Someone shot fire out of their hands. We had to show orange light on their face. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, you got you. it. Thank you. A post. I just said in post. <laughs> In both your films, I mean, you can obviously tell from the titles, um, but in both your films, uh, uh, faith and religion is a, is a pretty prominent uh, uh, a theme or, or, or symbol or message. Is this something you, you bring into a lot of your work or is it is kind of the first time you used it as kind of a narrative, a narrative tool? You can start with Emily. Yeah. So for uh, God Lady, uh, it was written by Sally uh, from an experience she has uh, living out in the middle of nowhere near Nanton and uh, a Jehovah's Witness actually taking the 10 minute drive to her house to go try and talk to her and then kind of like reversing and going like, and thinking about leaving and then coming back and not really wanting to, and not really knowing what to do. Neat. So that was <laughs> that was all uh, that was all just Sally deciding to tell us a horror story just based on that little experience that she had. Sure. Um, Religion isn't something that I usually talk about in my films. I'm, I like to, I like to be funny and joyful. And it's just not something that's ever really been a big part of my life. So it would, it just sort of happened that that was the story that Sally wanted me to help tell. I, I gotta know. Do, do you know why the Jehovah's Witness, like, did, did Sally have a scary looking house? What, what made the Jehovah's Witness so weird? Do you know? I think it was because they had to take this long drive and it's not just, actually going door to door it's spending hours of your day driving to people in the middle of nowhere sure sure yeah um so i i don't think her house is particularly scary but that house is <laughs> that that house is i don't i've never seen anyone uh door knock about bibles on their own i've only ever seen pairs like <laughs> i'm su- i'm surprised that case. some woman would drive up by herself to a remote location outside nanton I like that you're worried about her safety. You're clearly the mother of, yeah, of right. the room. You're like, where's the buddy system? Yeah. This isn't safe. You don't know who lives there. Uh, Jesus is her buddy and his mother. That's right. It's true, right? And when she wasn't, when there was no tire tracks, that's because he was driving. No, I don't know. Uh, but I did want to say the other motherly thing that happened is that in the first shot as I'm watching Don walk up the stairs uh, to that mansion on the John Scott Ranch, I'm like, careful, that one step is just, it's practically broken that step is nearly <laughs> rotten walk on the left honey walk on the left. Awesome. anyway um my attraction to i guess the religious aspect sort of came from like i love scary movies and i think the scariest ones for me are like the exorcist and anything to do with religion in a way and i grew up catholic and i don't know if that's why but i just find possession and all that stuff just super creepy um so that attracted me to that element but also um from um, themes of marriage and all of this that all comes a lot of that comes from religion and just tradition and uh, almost like the worst thing for a polyamorous thruple that like got married in this instance is to, like to be butting up against um, the controllers of of these traditions of marriage and so that's sort of like the the enemy or the, the keepers of marriage is religion our religion. So 
they were sort of just facing these two things off against each other, this very modern um, relationship versus traditional marriage and values. And, and that's kind of where those things tie together. But I don't typically yeah, incorporate religion or faith into my work. Right. right. Yeah. Me neither. <laughs> Have you noticed that? <laughs> I haven't, but I guess I would if you did. I would notice that. This episode of The Breakfast Dish is brought to you by Rumi, like a roommate, Mom. I wish you were still my Rumi. Cold drafts? Yep. Flickering lights? And yes. Where's that leak coming from? Me forgetting to turn the sink off. <laughs> I see. If you ever wonder what's really going on in your home, like it sounds like Karen might be, <laughs> Rumi's Ask a Home Inspector Service can help. You have to call. You have to, you have to call. It really sounds I, it like I'm really worried does. about you. Connect with a certified professional home inspector by phone or video call and get your question answers video call. Thank you so much. It's a new normal. Rumi will let you know what's easily fixable with a little DIY or when you might need to call in some professional help. Like me. <laughs> Visit Rumi.ca. That's Rumi, R-U-M-I dot C-A and book your Ask a Home Inspector appointment today. Something's on fire. What? <laughs> uh, can I talk about cast for a minute? Yeah. Of you, the films? You don't have to. You could just talk about whatever. Well, it's I season three. I don't know if you three. had another we're, blanket question. Goosey. Did you have another blanket question? I have a million questions. This is a blanket go. question. In uh, Going to the Chapel, the fellow that appears at the end, trying again not to spoil. What is that performer's name? Uh, another family member, Sean McKinney. I thought. <laughs> I, I was looking <laughs> going, ah, names yeah. sound, that's another McKinney. See, Griffin, I've been trying to convince Griffin for years now that we should start Nepotism Theater Company. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah. Everybody's doing yeah, it. Yeah. Everybody. Our, we're already doing Nepotism Film Company. So, <laughs> nepotism and podcast, podcast Studio. So, all right. The next thing I did craft services on had nothing to do with Griffin. And they, somebody came up to me and went, okay, so whose mom are you? Because it's only ever the moms that do yeah. craft services. Yeah. Did I'm you like, really get asked that? Yeah. 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 Whose wow. mom are you? And I was like, no, nobody's. So I just got this gig on my own. Um, <laughs> Your two ladies, the fighting daughters in God Lady, they are That's stunt my favorite performers. Band. The, fight, fighting, the daughters. fighting daughters. Uh, they're stunt performers themselves. Kelsey uh, is a stunt performer, also working in town. Uh, she's also an actress, and she's also a producer. Uh, but she's uh, she's an MMA fighter. She was a world champion um, Muay Thai fighter, Ooh. and got into stunts in the last few years here in, in Calgary. And has also been acting as well. And then Shauna, I believe, is just doing stunts. But uh, I mean, in the in this case, all of the all of the people were stunt actors who were doing the stunts. Ryan Northcott, am I saying the right name? In mine, Jay Northcott. Yeah, Jay, Jay Northcott. There's also another Ryan Northcott in Edmonton. Any relation between the Northcotts? No, yeah. no nepotism there. How come I couldn't be Karen Johnson in the Equity Union, and there can be a million Ryan Northcott? Well, well, they're not. I mean, only one of them's an actor. Oh, I see. Okay. Last question: Was Michaela in your film as well as One Hit Die? Have you both worked with mm, Michaela? Mm -hmm. Yes. Cassandra the Paladin. I love working with Michaela. Yeah, we've collaborated on a bunch of stuff in the past. Yeah, she's an incredibly talented actor. It's uh, yeah, she's great. It's something we, we you you kind of touched on about uh, making short films if you don't have enough money or or with or with friends or with family. Is there something about the medium of specifically short film that you find is either a boon or like a a, a very large hurdle to go over? Like I have a I have a short screening at, at the Alberta Shorts Night, How to Make a Friend, and we did it for three days, zero dollars, and just with our buddies, and it's found a lot more success than like some of our large funded stuff. So so I, I yeah I just wanted to hear your thoughts on specifically. The yeah the, the the medium of like the maybe not the industry but the medium of short film uh, Emily well and you can you can be honest this is freaking a uh, breakfast dish unplugged triple X rated it is called the breakfast dish for a reason um, I guess uh, short films are often they're like a proof of concept or uh, people are trying to do new jobs for the first time like for me this is the first time I was a director of a project. Mm -hmm. Uh, that I wasn't like a director of a second unit or something on a shoot that I was already firsting. So uh, I think a lot of times people don't have the, the contacts or the influence to be able to get the necessary funds to make it this big funded thing. So yeah, and as, as far as people liking them and how they get received. I, I personally love short films because I have ADHD and a short attention span. So right. totally. yeah, it's a, uh, you know, it's a, it's around 10 minutes, usually short films and you, you get a start, a middle and a finish and you're moving on and seeing the next one. So 
Yeah, I think, uh, and shorts packages are so fun for that way, totally. uh, for that reason. Uh, we, you can see so many different stories in an hour and a half as opposed to an hour and a half journey sort of thing. So I guess that's sort of answered your question. For sure, yeah. There's, there's that great playback article talking about like, kind of like the, the rise of internet video popularity and stuff like TikTok because attention spans are kind of dwindling. So then when the short films come out, it's a nice little, little, little bite chomp of a story. Totally. How about you, man? I was attracted to the short because I just needed to finish one and get it into a sure, festival. Sure, sure, sure. Because I had made shorts in the past that just didn't end up getting finished. And I was like, dude, you got you to gotta finish one. <laughs> you got to do the thing. You got to finish it. So that was my whole goal. So the fact that uh, it's here is just a success from, from that point of view. Because I've attempted to make just get like a feature funded before. Um, and was like, no, you got to step back. Just like get, sure. the, get the short done, get some, it'll be easier to apply for grants and all of that once you've sort of established yourself in a festival with a short. So it was just step one, trying to just drive it and, and keep the motivation going to, to finish it. Totally. So, some, so the advice kind of floating around for emerging filmmakers of just like do your first short, like just do your first film you'd, you'd identify with. Yeah. And, and just, yeah, get it, get it finished. Cause it's so easy to bail. I don't know. I'm sure everybody has like so many projects that have just kind of fallen to the wayside or whether it's just because you didn't feel like it achieved what you wanted it to. And so you're just like, Oh, I can't show this or, or whatever it is. But uh, yeah, just keep, keep your head down and get her done. There's a lot of hurdles I don't know, in, in film. It just seems harder, I guess, to get it from start to finish. It's just, a, it's a long process and funding. And I decided to just fund this one myself because I was just tired of not getting funding. So I just paid everybody that was on set and, and just sort of took the hit, which I had heard in the past, like, yeah, you end up with like a $10,000 credit card bill at the end of something. And you're like, yeah, but for me, it was, it was worth it just because oh, yeah. I didn't have to wait on funding. I could just go and just get it done. And I, the peace of mind of just having that was worth the investment. I am here for the first time in season three to say that The Breakfast Dish is part of the Alberta Podcast Network. Locally grown, community supported, the intro music you just heard and the outro music you're about to hear is by Alexander Kalman. All graphic design for The Breakfast Dish has been done by Morgan Armter. And something very nice and special I get to say, in case you forget, is that this episode of The Breakfast Dish was recorded on site, in person. Oh at the Calgary International Film Festival <laughs> in the SIF Podcast Studio booth. It's in a its sec- uh, 22nd year. It brings the best of Alberta, Canadian, and world cinema to Calgary each fall. We have two Alberta filmmakers with us right now. And if you want to learn more about SIF, you can go to www.sifcalgary.ca. That's C-I-F-F calgary.ca. Or they're also at SIF Calgary on pretty much all your social medias. Uh, uh, Karen. Yeah. What's coming up this week? I'm not going to tell you what's coming up this week. I'm going to tell you what's coming up over the next two months, which is there are theater companies that are opening up and doing Whoa. plays in person. And no theater. I don't want to hear about that here at SIF. No shade on the SIF, but a lot of your there's a lot of crossover performers that you may have seen in films at SIF that you might see. So. Yeah, take the time to go to the Theatre Alberta website, see all the different theatres there are in Calgary. They're all listed there. Professional, uh, Theatre for Young Audience, Community, there's probably 40 different theatre companies in the city and it's not just three big ones. So please go have a look at that because there's so many great plays coming. Emily and Matt, thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast Dish. Thank you for having us. There is one thing we like to do uh, to kind of wrap up with The Breakfast Dish. And Karen is a professional improviser. So she's going to ask you a question, maybe about what we talked about, maybe about breakfast. But it's unclear. All I can tell you is that it's not planned. Here we go. Three, two, one. Uh, The Bible that floats around in the... (laughs) The Bible tells us. (laughs) (laughs) The Bible Bible that is a prop in going to the chapel. If you had to pick a word from the Bible that talks about your film, what would it be? A word, not a phrase. I don't even know... (laughs) No, I'm trying to make it difficult. I actually know the Bible pretty well. Yeah. yeah. You could say the. Uh, marriage. <gasps> Ooh, good. Nice. Okay. Uh, God Lady. If the, if the movie was called God Man, who would have played the lead? God Man. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Kenneth Branagh? I don't know. Oh, that's a good answer. That's the only person I could think of. But also, he's super cool. I want him in everything. All right. Well, this one shouts out to, our, to, to my God Man. Uh, dancing Gigi on the dashboard of Don Negazito's car. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the lord of the dance city. Oh, we, oh, we going to have to get the rights to whatever you're just singing.
This has been The Breakfast Dish.